Hi there. My name is Jordan, and I've never done anything like this before, so I'm incredibly nervous. I've never recorded myself. I've never put myself out there for the world to see. And the only reason I'm doing it today is because I've had a couple people. Every time I share my testimony locally, I have people tell me that it's something that should be public. I should post it on YouTube, and it has the potential to help. Maybe not many, because it's a very unusual story, but if it just has the potential to help one or two people to get out of this or to see that they're not alone, then it's, I think it's worth doing. So forgive me if I stutter, if I repeat myself. I did write a script, but I'm not going to use it. Um, it'll be too mechanical if I do. I'll just use it as a reference. Um, but I don't even know where I want to start. Where should I start? I guess I should start with... My background, um, I was a militant atheist growing up. Like, it was my hobby to rip on Christians and try and make them feel stupid. I spent many hours, many days researching Christianity and various other religions when I was a kid. And I think my hatred towards religion wasn't it didn't ever have anything to do with God like I always kind of knew God was there but I hated the way that people expressed it like I saw the pain and suffering that it caused and I really resented that um actually I have some pictures that I can show you one second I don't know how to edit the videos of a heathen I was, how saturated in darkness and filth I was. This was me in grade 12. I literally refused to leave the house without wearing inverted crosses or something that blasphemed God and Christ. I was a very ignorant child. I can't really block out the people in this one, but I'm right in the middle. The one with the Marilyn Manson shirt, um, right there. I looked like a boy, so I was bullied terribly all throughout school. It wasn't until I was 16 that I started to kind of look like a woman, so people weren't too nice to me. I have a massive forehead, like, it's not that, yeah, it is bad now, but kids were really mean to me when I was younger, so I grew up with quite the inferiority complex. Um, so I guess that's where I should start in childhood. I, I was, uh, I obviously already did start, but, um, yeah, as a child I was very angry and very judgmental and very arrogant. Like, I wanted, all I cared about was getting into a top school, becoming, I wanted to become a psychologist from the time I was like, I don't know, 11. And I always wanted to help people with their mental health, that's the main thing, and I didn't really realize until recently that maybe, you know, doing that in a spiritual way would be more suitable. So, but all I'm trying to say is as a kid, I all I cared about was success in by the world standards. And I think that's normal for a lot of people, but it really became like, I failed at everything I ever tried to succeed in in life. And as a result of that, um, I quickly learned that I was a failure and a loser. And I've always kind of seen myself that way. So I would self-sabotage everything that I would ever try and do. And eventually it just got to the point where I stopped trying to be good at anything and I just started trying to be the worst. So I started using drugs at a very young age. Like I was using MDMA regularly when I was 14 years old and I started smoking cigarettes at that age. I started using mushrooms. Um, abusing prescription meds, pretty much anything I could to get my mind off of the pain I was feeling. And the reason I was in pain, I don't want to get too into that because I'm over it and it's something that God and Jesus has helped me to heal from and I don't hold anything against the person at all. But when I was 12, I met an, an adult on the internet and for two and a half years, this guy strung me along and he was the singer of a band, so he kind of wanted that whole like groupy experience. And now I realize that he had a lot of issues and he was very insecure. So the only person he felt that he could get that from was me. And unfortunately, 
Uh, it caused me a lot of pain because I wasn't the only one he was talking to. He was talking to all sorts of other girls and when I actually found that out, the heart crushing feeling that I felt that moment has never really left me. Like I've always had it in the back of my mind that no man is ever gonna love me, no man ever really could. And so I grew up with this really, really dark conditioning in terms of relationships and unfortunately that's not the only time I was abused. I had been molested on a few separate occasions. So that was a struggle for me. And as I've grown, I've realized a lot of women have to go through that. And that's why I'm sharing my testimony because I feel like a lot of people go through really dark things. They have really dark things happen to them and then they grow up con conditioned to believe that there's something wrong with them. My iPad cut me off, but all I was saying is that um, people, sometimes we go through things when we're younger and then we grow up with this certain conditioning and we react to things in a way that we wouldn't have otherwise and a lot of us are way too hard on ourselves. And someone once said to me that you cannot blame yourself for the things you did to attempt to heal. And I'm saying that to all of you right now because that is so 100% the truth. Like, there's so many people who have terrible things happen to them and then they grow up and they do terrible things to others. Not in the same way ever, really. But, you know, we, we take our damage and we inflict that damage on others in our lives. And yes, uh, there comes a certain point where you have to take responsibility for that and just, like, stop living in the past. But... I just don't want anyone to feel bad if they're in a situation where, you know, they they endured a lot. If you endured a lot and you have a hard time coping with it, all I'm saying is it's okay. You'll be okay. Jesus can help you get through it no matter what it is. And I also want to say that the things that I have to be remorseful of and guilty of are far worse than what I'm sure anybody here is watching. And I don't care if you're like a 60-year-old man in prison watching this, I've probably done worse things than you. And yet Jesus forgave me. And if it weren't for my family, I would confess everything right here, right now, but I, I don't need my family being embarrassed by that because I live in a very small town so that's the only reason I'm not but if anyone ever has an issue with guilt or sadness and they need someone to talk to like if you are harboring a secret and you think it's so bad that nobody would ever understand trust me I have about 15 of those and I told three people in my life every single one of those things and I didn't lose one of those people they all understood because I find that humans with the little things, we have a really hard time being forgiving, but when it comes down to the really big stuff, and I mean big stuff, like things that most people couldn't even comprehend, if you actually confess that to someone, the fact that you told that to someone, I mean, they're going to be so honored that they're just going to be honored that you open yourself up. So don't feel, but make sure the person you, you know, confess your sins to is trustworthy. I'm just saying that that's what, if you turn to Jesus, that's what he will urge you to do. He will urge you to come clean about the things you're harboring in your heart. And it's not to be harsh, it's to show you that people are far more forgiving and understanding than what we give them credit for. But, um... Oh yeah, I also want to add that my parents did everything they could to keep me away from that guy. I threatened to commit suicide, as many young girls do. So they sent me to a home for kids, uh, troubled kids who were, you know, involved in drugs and abusive relationships and stuff. And I was only there for two weeks and it was the best time of my life because it was there where I realized that I was basically being used as a sexual object for a man. And there was absolutely nothing acceptable about that. But it was at that place that I realized I there was no love there and that's not what love is supposed to be. I still haven't learned what love is supposed to be, <laughs> but I'm working on it. Um, so anyway, that's been a really, really, really long road trying to get through that. Um, I mentioned that because it's completely plagued me ever since. And because of that, I've never been able to remain sober. That's the main reason I'm commenting on that. Ever since that happened to me, I have been an addict and still to this day I use marijuana medicinally, do not condone that absolutely whatsoever at all, but 
but five years ago I quit using all heavy drugs, I quit drinking alcohol, and I quit seven different medications that I was on, and I switched to cannabis, which I feel like it served its purpose for a time medicinally to help me with my anxiety, but I feel a pressure big time to quit, and I've been smoking less and less every day by the grace of God. He's finally helping me to love myself enough that I can let that go. Um, so, very important part of my story is, um, where do I start? In 2013, my, I was an outcast my whole life, like I already mentioned, I was bullied, I didn't have many friends. Kids were awful to me. I think God did that for a reason, so that I would always long to find him. Like, he put me in so many places where I was not welcome. I've never felt welcome anywhere on this planet. Like, there's nowhere where I have felt completely at home, except with my mom and my dad when I was a kid. And so they were everything to me. And um, in 2013, my mother, when she was about 10, not even 10 minutes, four minutes away from home, she was out on her motorcycle all day. And she was three minutes away from home, four minutes away from home, and she got into a motorcycle accident. So that was the worst thing that has ever happened to my family. I don't sound very emotional because I've recorded this testimony probably 15 times and you know you're not gonna cry every time you record your testimony but that was the worst thing that I have ever had happen in my entire life well at the point at that moment in time that was the worst thing that had ever happened to my family and she ended up having three amputations and she spent the majority of the year in and out of the hospital and it was absolutely horrific but two years later, we thought everything was going good in 2015. She was finally starting to make a recovery. She was looking for a new job. She was excited about that. She was going to start working for the local law enforcement agency. And um, on August 31st of 2015, at 3 o'clock in the morning, I was still awake and I was sitting on my couch. And I that night, I tell you, that whole night I thought I was dying and I had no idea what was happening. I was abusing drugs at the time, so I assumed I had OD'd, I assumed I was dying. I had no idea anything was wrong. And I was sitting on my couch and I remember it was like 2.50 something in the morning and I got a call from my dad. And as soon as the phone started ringing, I just burst into tears. I knew exactly what happened. I thought I was dying, I thought I OD'd, I thought I was like I thought that night, I texted my mom the longest text thinking that I would never talk to her again six hours before at nine o'clock. I texted her saying it was like this page, this wall of text, I love you so much. I hope everything's going okay. I miss you. And at that morning, at three in the morning, she died from an undetected cerebral aneurysm eating ice cream on my dad's couch. <laughs> Like, she was getting better. She was supposed to go and get a job. She had just gotten, or I, I think she was putting out resumes to start a new job. She was, you know, like, everything was good. Everything was great. The night before, they had a pool party with a bunch of friends, and that's really nice. <laughs> that was her last day alive. But my mama went through so much the last five years of her life, the last three years of her life, and my mother was an angel okay and um but when i lost her everything for me changed overnight she was my rock she was all i had she was the only one my dad i love my dad with all my heart but you know like as a i'm a girl so my mom it was it was a different kind of relationship <laughs> she was all i had my mom I'm such an ugly crier, but I don't care. She was all I had. And I think that St. John Ramirez, in one of his books, talks about how Satan tries to destroy a child at three specific points, and that's early childhood, around the age of puberty, and entering into adulthood, I believe. Those are the exact points, the second two anyway, when I, as soon as I turned 12 and as soon as I turned 18. Those were the worst years of my life. 
I don't know why. I don't know why any of it happened. And I am just so grateful that God used that last opportunity because that could have killed me. It was so close to killing me, but I got down on my knees. And for the first time in my life, I said, I am such an idiot and I need you because I don't know who I am. I don't know anything anymore. And I just got down on my knees and I said, Jesus, if you're there, if you're real, if there's anything to this at all, I need you. And I will spend the rest of my life helping other people to find you. If you can just please help me out of this. <laughs> and so at the time I was a very heavy addict. Um, I had quit using oxycodone one year before the day, it was August 31st, 2014, was the day I quit using oxycodone and one year to the day my mother died. But I didn't quit using drugs. I was still heavily addicted to my prescription meds and I was drinking all the time. So even though I wasn't, you know, sticking needles in my arm, like I was still not good. And I feel like that date was supposed to be a warning to smarten up because it, like, worst day of my life, August 31st, always has been the worst day of my life. And, yeah, my mother was everything, but God used that. I think the devil tried to use that to destroy me, and God used it to bring me to him because within a week of me praying to Jesus, within a week, I quit all seven medications I was on. A psychiatrist called me a liar. She said, you can't, you, that would have killed you because I listed, I was on Quora or something. I don't know where I wrote that, but I shared my testimony one time and some lady was like, that would have killed you, you're a liar, because I was on such heavy medications. I was on one for ADD, which is an amphetamine, I was on a, um, a, a benzodiazepine, two sleeping pills, something called gabapentin, I was on an antidepressant, uh, I think I'm missing one or two, but yeah, I was on a lot of different meds. And yeah, no, I quit those and I never felt better in my whole entire life. Within days, I started seeing auras around things, like auras around trees, auras around people. I started lucid dreaming and I had no idea what that was. I started astral projecting, had no idea what that was. And I don't, um, I have to explain. Um, my awakening, my testimony comes in two parts. My mom died. I prayed to Jesus, but I didn't have any knowledge of the Bible or Christianity, so all these weird things like the astral projection and the auras, like that, I was like, that contradicts the Bible, so I didn't even look into the Bible, I just went and studied ancient Egyptian texts, um, Hindu texts, Buddhist texts, like the Bhagavad Gita, Upanishads, the Egyptian Book of the Dead, Emerald Tablets, stuff like that. Like I just, that's what I started studying. Even though I prayed to Jesus, a lot of these teachings that I was reading about talk about Jesus too. So I didn't think that I was doing anything bad. Um, oh, I lost, I was saying something important before, but now I don't remember, but I really had to point that out so that you don't get lost. There's two parts. So first I do awaken and I realize that there is a God. I realize there is something, but then I totally went down the wrong path. I spent five years in like deep, deep, deep occultism, okay? And I've watched a lot of testimonies and a lot of people say that they see demons and this and that and it's like there's, they say that like parts of it are really good and then parts of it are really bad. I can agree with that, but I never saw any demons. I did have a couple dreams about angels, but they came at times when I really needed it. Like the morning before my cat, my beloved blessed cat from childhood, the morning before he passed away, I had an angel visit me in a dream telling me that they're absolutely real. And so I don't think that that was demonic. And that happened before I needed, even knew I needed it. You know, I woke up and then my cat ended up having a ruptured tumor under his tongue that I had no idea about. So that was heartbreaking, but um, like I didn't see anything particularly dark or creepy in the new age, but I understand that that's the origins of it. So I just want to come out and say that like for me, it wasn't an outwardly, obviously negative. There wasn't any negative manifestations of evil is what I'm saying, except one time when I was doing a mirror meditation session and I saw my face morph into like hundreds of different beings and one of them was like a reptilian alien and another one was like a demon with black holes for my eyes and like a... Yeah, don't ever try that. That was freaky. So that's the most evil thing I ever saw was when I tried that. But um, 
I did have a bunch of really crazy experiences though and I started learning about the law of attraction which now I still don't know what to think about that because it works. I think it's a natural law of the universe that God put into place but I think that prioritizing talking about it like I what I noticed anyway even with myself when I was at the epitome of my manifesting like I was I don't even know today if it was manifesting or God blessing me like I don't know I can't say that for sure but I everything I asked for I received and I always praised God but I noticed that there were a lot of people around me who didn't do that like they all attribute it to themselves like oh I'm manifesting I'm manifesting I'm manifesting I'm doing this I'm doing that and although I also called it oh yeah I'm manifesting I also said praise God this is amazing that this is how the world works like praise God hallelujah and all the way through the new age every day I prayed God please teach me the truth of how to know you and how to bring others to you because that's all I care about that's why that's tattooed on my hand yes it's from a movie but it means a lot more to me than that God's truth finding God is all I care about and not for myself for her. I know God is there 100% and all I want to do for the rest of my life is point other people towards him so every day since the day that my mom died and he saved my life, I have been praying to know the truth. So it was really confusing when I found out that the new age was all wrong. Um, it was confusing, but it all kind of made sense and there were enough synchronicities and enough signs along the way to kind of indicate that that's kind of where God wanted me. Because I'm the kind of person who I'm not going to listen to something unless I understand the origins of it and I'm the kind of person who gets to the you know, the nitty gritty, like I'll, I'll figure out the fine details that nobody else cares about and I always have to find out the origins of everything that I study. Like, I'm not gonna follow something if I don't understand the person who came up with these ideas, the, you know, like, where did it come from? So that's where my new age testimony comes to an end. I started having these doubts. I just started, like, I noticed in the new age for me, I would have these really high spiritual experiences where like, you know, my prayers would be answered, this, that. I would meet someone who, you know, like has lots in common with me. I would have super high peak experiences. Contrast it, like maybe one or two days a month that are really good. And then the rest of the time of the month, I would just be suicidally depressed. Like I was not healing. I would do my tarot cards and, you know, receive messages like, oh, we are working to help you or your angelic your angelic ancestors are working to help you find a balance between peak experiences and negative and it's just like the only way to find a balance is to get rid of all of that and turn your life over to Jesus that's what I learned because in the new age it's this constant roller coaster of oh I'm so excited oh I want to die oh I'm so excited oh I want to die like that's all it was for five years and it was just getting worse and worse and worse. Like I was getting so sick of the, like all, yes, all my prayers were being answered. All these questions were being answered. All these great things were happening, but then something would happen that would throw me off and confuse me or like something would happen that would make me feel like maybe I wasn't really understanding or like it was all just very, and it's all about you. Like it's all your efforts. You have to do this. You have to do those steps. You have to follow these steps. You have to read those books. You have to do, put these into practice. I was studying alchemy, like uh, trans, transformational alchemy, not like base metals into gold, like real alchemy, stuff like that. And it's all just like an endless list of books that you have to read and this and that. And that's what I found about most religions is that it's all up to you to do all the work except with Christianity. Christianity is the only religion where you come to Jesus and you say, okay, I've exhausted all my resources. I can't do it anymore. And he does the work for you. So I'm sure a lot of people will ask, well, how, if you dabble in all of those religions, how do you know Christi Christianity is the right one? That's how I know. Because as soon as I came to Jesus and said, okay, I give up, I can't do this, like, please. And I did that again on January 7th of 2020 this year. Um, and I'll tell you the story of why that happened now. So, yeah, I started to have doubts, and I somehow ended up finding this, it was like a, not directly related to Freemasons, but the people, because like I said, I get to the bottom of everything, and so I found this school, it was a secret mystery school, I'm not going to say what it's called, but it was totally in line with everything I was studying, and I sent them an application, they sent me an email back saying, um, 
the email just said like hi Jordan we're gonna send you a bunch of books if you could please read these and tell us like let us know if you're still interested in the school but they were just trying to make sure that I was on par with the things that they were teaching and all they said was you're gonna have to sacrifice any desire to know anything outside of yourself meaning God I don't think they said God specifically but they're like stop reading the books you're reading only focus on our books our literature and it's like theosophy literature if you know what that is that's why I say my story's weird like not everyone's into this stuff but a lot of people are and this is what the Freemasons are into this is what all the secret societies are into and that's what creeps me right out about it because I was right at the doorstep of this crap and so I was almost ready to get into the school. They sent me this package with all these pamphlets and stuff. And the fact that they told me to not worry about God and the whole entire course was about focusing on the divinity within you, okay? That's what it was about. And that's on par with all new age teachings. Eat of this knowledge and ye too shall be as gods. That's what this is. And that's when I started to realize that because they didn't want me reading the Holy Bible. They didn't want me praying to God. Like, I don't know about you guys, but my mission since God saved me has been to find him. It's not to reach my own inner enlightenment. It's not to be a guru. It's not to be a yoga teacher or a Reiki master. I just want to know where God is so that I can help other people because I'm not the one who can help people. God's the only one who can help. So I just want to find the one true path to God and the fact that the this school told me no don't think about that we're only going to be thinking about ourselves like I I know all the mistakes I've made in my life and I don't think that this is the path that's going to work for me I really started questioning this so I looked into the school turns out the school was ran by an organization that was formerly called Lucifer's Publishing Company. I'm not going to tell you what it's called now. It's pretty similar and it was the name that made me made my stomach hurt. I was like, what's up with this name? Like this was the origin of all the new age stuff I was reading. So I looked into the school and I found out that this school has been closely associated with the UN for since the 1960s, since its conception, or I don't know when the UN's conception was, but since its conception, this school was closely related to it. And I found out rather quickly that this school and the UN have been working to force the new age onto us until at l since at least the 1960s because that's when they started releasing pamphlets to households all over North America saying things like the upcoming new age of enlightenment and they were talking about um, all Eastern meditation practices and that's when they started pushing all of this but it was this loose oh I shouldn't have said it I don't want to Oh, okay, well that's the name, and that plus another word. Um, this company, they're the ones behind that. And when I found out that they're the ones, like this is a Freemason school, not outwardly, they don't admit that, but the person who started the school was married to a 33rd degree Freemason. And this is all the same stuff that I was studying for, like I, yeah, this company works with the government to try and force the new age onto us. That's what I'm saying, okay? And you can go and you can look at it. It wouldn't be hard for you to figure out with the information I've already told you who these people are. But as soon as I realized that, all of this, and this was on January 7th, 2020, when I was sitting there doing all this research and I was sitting there with the package that they sent me and it was like all these pictures just started flashing through my mind of me standing in the supermarket and looking at Time magazine on the shelf and seeing chakras and seeing the Smithsonian talk about the piezoelectricity of crystals and all the kids shows on TV now about warlocks and witchcraft and incantations and the demon book of sigils at Walmart for children. Like I was just having this montage of, oh my gosh, everything I'm doing is what they want me to be doing. I don't trust the government. Why am I eating out of the palm of their hand? They're pushing this stuff onto us for a reason. And I just think it's hilarious how I went five years thinking that I was so enlightened, thinking that I had the right to teach or tell anybody anything. And I knew nothing. I knew nothing. And these are the things that they want us believing in. Look at the movies, you know? And that's all it took was, okay, as soon as I realized that I was doing exactly what the government wanted me doing, I was like, okay, so what doesn't the government want me doing? 
all you have to do is turn on Netflix and watch one movie for five minutes. Whose name do they use in vain? And like 600 times in every movie? Who do they blaspheme? Who do they not want you paying any attention to? Jesus Christ. So that's my answer. Look in the complete opposite direction of what the world is looking in, and that's where you should be looking. Oh, sorry, I got a little excited there, but yeah, and like, I'm not anxious at all about putting this out there. I'm not using anyone's names or saying anyone in particular. Like, yes, a certain organization is evil, and everyone already knows that because they've been telling people that they want to depopulate our planet for the last, like, what, 40, 50 years when they came out with Agenda 21? Like, these, th these things aren't lies. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I can't stand conspiracy theories. I think that... There's just, it's impossible to weed out truth from fiction, but this is legit. The only reason anyone is getting into this stuff right now is because that's what the elite want us doing. So if you really think that that's, you know, Matthew seven thirteen, Broad is the way that leads into destruction. The new age path is the broad way that leads into destruction. And Christianity is the narrow path that leads unto life. That's all I have to really say. Um, I, yeah, that's all I really have to say. I have, um, my story is a lot longer, like there's a lot more to it, but I don't really have anything more to add at this point. If you guys have any questions, feel free to let me know. Um, there is something that I might make another video because God, since I, since I realized God was real, and I invited him into my life and he accepted me and forgave me and loved me. Um, there has not been, and I don't know, like they talk about gifts of the spirit in the Bible. I'm still a very new baby Christian, okay? But they talk about gifts of the spirit in the Bible and I don't know, I'm starting to suspect that maybe he gifted me the gift of prayer because, and forgive me if this is a wrong understanding of what that means, but for the last five years, every single thing I've prayed for has happened. Every single thing. And I started recording them, my miracles in 2017, and it's now t September of 2020, and I have nine journals worth of miracles. And I really am starting to feel compelled to share those. So if anyone's interested in hearing those, like if that would help anyone, please let me know. I have so many instances where God saved my life. Well, not saved my life. Yes, saved my life on two occasions, but on one, like, whenever I need anything, <laughs> it appears, and it's just absolutely crazy, and it's not the law of attraction. Like, I know it's not that. It's, it's something personal. There's a personal relationship here that's being developed, and I, yeah, I just, I need people to understand that this is such a real interactive part of your everyday life when you become a Christian. It's not like you give your life to Christ and then you just suffer for the rest of your life. No, it's a this constantly growing, ever-evolving relationship with someone who's actually there. Like this morning, I was going through all of my stuff, my mom's stuff, um, packing some of it up to send away to my family. And I just had a moment of weakness and I sat down and I started crying. And I said, I miss you so much. And I grabbed this purse I was going through. And I'm just cleaning it out because there's all sorts of crap in the bottom. Just like little crumbs, little crumbs, little crumbs. I don't know what even compelled me to look down into my hand. But there was this tiniest, 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 like t minuscule little heart. And I was like, get out of here. And then I come upstairs. I empty the rest of the purse into the garbage. Guess what falls on the outside of the garbage? I hear something go cling, 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 hits the ground. I look, there's a little earring with a perfect cross on it. And I just instantly started bursting, like, thank you, Lord, thank you. And I think that's why he answers all of my prayers, because I noticed even the littlest of things. And I praise him, and I lift my arms, and I say, hallelujah, thank you so much. But, um, yeah, no, there's so many miracles I've had in my life. Then I'll share one huge one right now, just to give you an example. The first day I realized that I never had anything to ever worry about again with God was the day that I asked my boyfriend to go and pay my rent payment. And he went shopping and he accidentally lost the envelope. 
and he came to my work um i was at work that's why i asked him to go and i saw him pacing outside so i went and i said what's going on what's wrong and he was like you're gonna be so mad i lost your rent payment and i just remember thinking okay well i think that's what this faith thing is for so i got down on my knees and i prayed and i said god i'm so sorry to have to ask you for money i feel so shameful but please it's the last day of the month and i can't lose my apartment please 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 help me like i'll do anything the very next day i swear on my mother's grave i did not tell anybody other than Al, my boyfriend, he knew. But I did not say a thing to anybody about this. I just wanted to see what God would do. And the very next day I was at work, cleaning a shower. I'm a cleaner, by the way. I clean toilets all day. So nothing glamorous about me at all. And I got a text from my dad saying, hey honey, I just happened to run into some money at the casino last night and I deposited the exact amount I needed into my account and he had no idea. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. I have nine books full of stories like that. I am not exaggerating. He has been there for me every second of the day since my mom passed away and I know he was there for me before that too and I just didn't acknowledge him. In fact, he saved my life on so many different occasions, even though I probably went to school on those days and blasphemed him and did everything I could to turn people away from him. And he still saved my life. He still kept me out of harm's way for the, like, yes, some unfortunate things happened, but there were m many occasions where I should have been dead and God kept me alive, even when I hated him, even when I blasphemed him. He is the most forgiving, patient compassionate loving and you know what the best part is like right now when you think about him and you get this warm feeling it's like he gives you a hug does that happen for anyone else because whenever i think about him it happens for me or when i'm reading or praying or anything i just or if i need it and i just sit here and i and i can feel it you can feel it <laughs> You can feel it. Hey, actually, you know what? Let's do that. If you haven't given your life to Jesus Christ, I, I invite you to pray along with me right now. Uh, I don't have it written down or nothing, and I'm a brand new Christian, so it might not be the best prayer, but I'm just pray along with me right now. All that matters is if you mean it, and if you really want it, just invite him in and let him prove himself to you. So just repeat after me. Just pray along with me. Dear Jesus, I come to you today to ask for your forgiveness for the way I've been living my life. I confess on this day that you are my Lord and you are my Savior, and I am so sorry for never realizing that before now. I ask that you please move into me, God. Please show me your will for my life. Please take control of my life. Please do everything that I know only you were capable of doing in my life. Please make me like you. Please make me better than what I am now. Please God, please God, please forgive me for all my sins. I've been doing this on my own for far too long and I cannot do it any longer. Please Jesus, please help me now. I devote my life to you, I give my life to you. I pray in Jesus' blessed name, amen. It doesn't really matter what you say as long as you confess that you want him in your life. Ask Jesus into your life, mean it with all your heart, and watch him transform your life. I used to be morbidly obese. I used to have acne all over my face. I, my skin's not the best, but like I was over 230 pounds. Now I'm 130. Like there's a lot of things that Jesus can do for you. He took away my anxiety. He took away my depression. He took away my fear of sharing what I have done. And I've done worse things than the vast majority of people have done. And yet, and on a one-on-one -on -one basis, I have no problem confessing those things and sharing it with someone if I know it'll help them feel better about themselves. 
but for five years I was terrified when I was in the new age I was so terrified every single day that something from my past was gonna come back to bite me in the butt and now I'm standing here and I, I'm like I'll shout my past from the rooftops like look at what Jesus has done with someone like me I was such I was so messed up I was so messed up you have no idea I wasn't just a drug addict I stole every day of my life I was arrogant i was hateful i would sit online and just say mean things to people all day long i would rip on christians i would insult everybody if someone was looking at me in the grocery store i'd say what the f is your problem and they would say actually i just liked your outfit that happened to me once and i was like i didn't even know what to say my mom backhanded me she's like you're so effing embarrassing but she said that to me, and she was right, I was. I was such an arrogant little puke. But anyway, by the grace of God, I have come a really long way. And it doesn't matter what you're dealing with, he can heal it. I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, he can heal it. God bless you. I love you all. Have a wonderful life.